Hi, everybody, and welcome to a Gem of a Secret podcast. My name is Donatella, my secrets. And my name is Coco Gem Holiday. Coco, how are you doing tonight? Um, well, as this is part two of our series that we are posting, yeah. um, this is my second cocktail. So if <laughs> I slur any words, you tuned in, I'm sorry. Also, my <laughs> second uh, box of wine. Uh, not box of wine, glass of wine, sorry. Uh, box of wine, that would be, that would be something. I would... <laughs> I would be on the floor in a pile of my own throw up. <laughs> it's funny how to think about if she went through a whole box of wine in a 20 minute recording. Oh like, God, <laughs> I would not be able to talk. <laughs> and that vomit would be all kinds of colors. That's a fun concept for a future uh, podcast episode though. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Oh my goodness. You know what would be kind of interesting? I'm just going to leave this in here that yeah. um, for the future podcast, we should actually do a live feed while we're recording. I was totally thinking the same thing. Yeah. I, <laughs> I was actually, no, I think... I think I, I, okay, so, um, yeah, we should get very done up because we're totally women right now. We're, yes. we're actually, we're, just, we're recording we're this in full, in women. full geesh. I am wearing the most uncomfortable bodysuit. I am tucked to the nines. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I have the full fantasy on for you. Yeah, I have like this locks by uh flawless flawless locks on right now yeah um i have the perfect smoky eye and my mm-hmm. eye is incredibly blended mm-hmm. and also my tits just look amazing also i use setting spray because i'm not going to sweat during this and i don't want anyone to think that i ever do <laughs> <laughs> track is fierce and fun it is so fierce and fun <laughs> the fiercest and funnest uh, oh, speaking of fierce fun drag, um, I'm continuing on with my Zodiac series. I uh, posted my Taurus look uh, this week. How do y'all like it? Let me know. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, let her know in the comments um, yeah. for the YouTube ones and then all the other platforms that we're putting this on. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also we'll have a comment section on our website too. Mm-hmm. What is our website, Donatella? Our website is a gem of a secret podcast.com. That is a gem of a secret podcast. Dot com. We don't have sponsors, so we only plug ourselves right now. <laughs> Gosh, I can't wait for that when we're like in the middle of like an intense story and then suddenly it pauses for I'm like, going to have the best commercial. segues. Uh, no, I'm going to segue. <laughs> Whatever it is, I'm going to have a segue into what it is that we're like plugging for the yeah, sponsor. Like, I'm going to be like, speaking of that, squatty potty. No. <laughs> speaking of that, squatty potty. Like, like we'll get squatty potty. Oh gosh, I want squatty potty to that sponsor would be great. us. That'd be so funny. That would be great. Um... So we are going back to talking about, um, well, because at the time of we're recording this, we don't know what's happening in the future. So we're going to talk specifically about the time that we were incredibly quarantined. Um, so uh, I did want to talk about online drag in the digital universe and how people are getting money. Now, one thing we wanted to say is that a lot of drag artists actually started an OnlyFans or a Just for Fans um, because of this, like to yeah. make a little extra coin. Cause I'm not, I tried to be a full-time drag artist in Portland. And this is probably a good time to say this. Um, it wasn't quite feasible unless you were an established person who was getting paid, um, like a Darcel, what are they called? Darcel girls. Yeah. Um, you have to be a legacy entertainer to be a full-time entertainer here in Portland. Yeah, and I mean, I know that a lot of the East Side entertainers would probably disagree with me in that because all of the East Side shows, they get booking fees. Yeah. But even with an East Side show, there's not consistently always a cast. Yeah. Like, so um, to be able to pay my bills, actually not even my bills, to be able to have a basic income, you would need to have a show that was like four to five days a week where you're making like 50 to a hundred dollars for that show for yeah. booking and then plus tips to be able to have like a decent okay amount of money in your yeah. life and so me and donatella we performed a lot in drag and i will say this though during the quarantine because i just went to burger king today um to get myself some like keto friendly food and i have to say like i was paying in cash and i said <laughs> to my husband I was like, gosh, I miss drag. Because there's like no cash anywhere in my life now. Yeah. Because I've went through all my drag money. And drag money Same. feeds me. I know. It's so weird not having cash on hand. Gosh. Like, it's so weird depending on my part-time content moderator job to get me by right now. And thank God I put some money in savings. Uh, like a little bit, but not much. But, you know, it's it's n- this was so unprecedented. Yeah. And it was It was super hard, like, to... I just... 
it's so weird to just not have cash. Mm-hmm. I like. The one thing is, I wasn't making enough money to be a full-time queen in Portland, but I will say I made quite a bit of money to where rarely ever did I have to rely on my big boy job to have, um, to, like, replenish my makeup, or... That's why I haven't been getting into drag. Mm -hmm. By the way, I I know we talked about this in the last episode, but one of the things is, I don't really get into drag unless I'm getting paid, and what I mean by that is, either I have a booking, or it's one of my scheduled appearances, or I'm on cast. Yeah. Um that I get to choose to be a part of. But with this, like, I'm not putting on makeup right now because I, if my makeup runs out, I'm not buying more. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't. It's not more. a necessity at this point. No, it's, it's not. It's not, you know, it's like... Okay, so there's this whole concept of right now us being in this, like, wartime kind of mindset. And yes. we very much so are. Because we're having to ration. We're having right. to uh, figure out how to use resources for the greater good. Right now, my money is not going towards highlight or foundation. Bitch, I will use sand or, you know, (laughs) whatever I need to use as like a powdery foundation on this face Mm -hmm. before I go and buy some more from from a store right now. Simply because my biggest concern right now is surviving and making sure that I have food day to day and that I'm rationing. I know that this is a very like... Okay, so people may think that I'm paranoid or that I'm in this weird, like, apocalyptic mindset. But for me right now, like, my mindset is, like, we don't know how long this is going to last. We don't know what's going on. I mean, we will get through this. We will. Right. We will. But (laughs) for me right now, I'm not worried about buying more makeup, fishnets, pantyhose, tights. I just bought a pair of tights and I feel guilty already for buying the tights because I can't perform in them now. Yeah, seriously. (laughs) I I mean, like we said in the very first part of our podcast um, in the very first episode, we're like, take this time to wash your brushes, wash your Mm -hmm. drag and things like that. I've even thought about, honestly, this is so stupid as a segue. I thought about doing an ASMR video. I thought about literally recreating the eating of the pickles. Oh, Like, just like rubbing the top. (laughs) And then like... (laughs) That's me. That's of course in those. full drag. Full in drag. drag. Yeah. Full drag. Done up. Live video. Yeah. <laughs> well, because and honestly, because I didn't want to feel like we were shaming anyone for like starting an OnlyFans or things like that. Because get your money. Yeah. The fact is, like everybody, every yeah, I can say this. And everybody there, is so there this was a platform that on. opened up for drag queens to do stuff like for OnlyFans, correct? Mm-hmm. There was a there is there is a platform that exists. Yeah, it was built on the Just for Fans platform, and actually, when they launched the Drag for Fans, um, it still had all of the porn related tags and yeah. metadata and all the stuff in there. Yeah. And so they've kind of fixed it all now. I actually even talked to them a couple days ago uh-huh. to have because they have a tip me feature. Mm-hmm. Um. That's so beneficial for drag artists. And I actually told them, I was like, you need to have a $3 tip me feature. Mm -hmm. Very rarely are you going to see somebody wanting to tip a $5 thing on a photo. Yeah. Like, so I had them add a $3. And the $3, I think, will be more beneficial for me. The thing is, I only post my videos to drag for fans now. I don't post them to YouTube. Because I want... I. The thing is, I work really... I'm going to start doing that. And yeah. you know what? They're not a sponsor, but here's here's a plug. So anyone listening to this, check out Drag for Fans. If you are if you are missing out on some high-quality drag content, go over there, support some of those queens, pay for the content that they're putting out there because they're probably working their fucking asses off right now. Yeah, definitely. And I think that it's... it's so it's D-R-A-G-F-O-R dot fans, F-A-N-S... Um, so drag for fans and sign up for it. Um, yes, obviously you need to get validated and everything and it's not hard to do. It's just, it's exactly like just for fans. I'm saying it like everybody out here is like, you oh, know yeah, what? I have a just for fans. By the time this podcast come up, I will have a drag for fans. Garen fucking tea it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm cursing a lot, but that's because I'm drinking wine. And, uh, <laughs> more for me to edit, right? No, I'm just kidding. We're not going to get monetized. Whatever. Not with this episode. No, but, <laughs> um, so just keep that in mind. And please go on there and support drag entertainers. And, yeah. Because there's a lot. I post a lot of free content on there, too. Um, Like, if I just, like, like a photo or whatever. But we had our whole behind the scenes for the work quarantine special that we did. And so that's actually, you have to subscribe to my channel to actually see that information. So yeah, uh, keep that in mind. Um, So the next topic we wanted to talk about is uh, the platforms that people are using to be digital. 
Um, so here's the thing. Like, I have read so many books about trying to be an Instagram influencer. I've read a lot of books about trying to do a Facebook page and all this other stuff. And it, honestly, at this point, I know people can tell you all day long. They're like, oh, yeah, you just got to follow these steps. Fact of the matter is, it's still a lot of luck involved. And, like, sure, you can boost a post, yeah. but it doesn't mean it's going to get looked at. And so the fact is, we're trying as drag artists to put our content out there with our fans and our followers. With Donatella and I, we're in a new city and a new place. We are. And so we don't have the following that some of the other artists might have. We don't, but I feel like in the short time that we've been here, me being here for a year, you being here for uh, the better part of a year. Yeah. Um, We have made a lot of friends and had a lot of people... Um really vibe with what we're doing so that's cool but yeah you're right we don't have this the same amount of following so social media marketing comes in handy it's something that we both have to kind of utilize um yeah and so what one of the other things that's really gumming me up with all of this is i'm actually really envious of somebody who can perform live on a facebook video and then get a lot of venmos or cash apps or paypals Um, I don't think that I would get that by doing it. I might want to do one. Maybe me and Donatella, since we have to be together, literally because we live in the same place. (laughs) I think we we should should do do a live podcast. We'll do a live podcast. Why don't we do that? I think that, I mean, we've talked about it already earlier in this episode, but I think, I think a live, like, especially after releasing this, if we get some people to, that tune in, we can totally do that. Yeah. I think that that would be a great idea. And we can post our cash apps and Venmo and see what happens. Um, but it has been really difficult and challenging for drag artists to get their messages out there. I've seen people, oh, this is so funny though. Somebody actually wrote online, they said, gosh, Facebook seems real crowded these days. Like, (laughs) and it is. For real, real. Seriously, I've seen like all of my friends have a post within the last five minutes. Oh, and also, and I'm going to throw this out there and this is just me being tongue in cheek. Um, so many posts on Facebook right now are checking in on how people are doing. I always see a post like, how's everybody doing today? And I'm just like, that's great and dandy and all. But the fact of the matter is, we're still the same. I saw one that was like, (laughs) I saw one that was like, I took a shower at 11 p.m. I have one sock on. I also don't know what day it is. And that is the most accurate description of this quarantine for me. That is tea. Like, the days (laughs) have been, like, mending together. We're still in March, right? Oh, at this time, during the podcast, we're still in March. Probably when it comes out, we won't be. We'll probably be in April. Um, because it's late March, but yeah, no, I, I can hardly understand what fucking day it is most of the time. Yeah, I don't. So, um, like I said in part one of this episode is I am still working (laughs) 40 hours. Yeah. So, but also my days are also blending together. Mm -hmm. I feel like, especially because my work is so hard right now. Um, and I'm an essential worker. And like I said, in the first part, I'm not going to say what I do for a living or where I work, but when I get home from work, I'm incredibly tired. And I'm sure that drag was probably something that marked your days for you. Drag marked my days completely because like, I think I still probably even have my calendar up Mm -hmm. because I'm super sad about all the things I was missing. Also on top of the fact, I don't think I've said this publicly yet. I was actually taking a drag break. And by drag break, I mean I was only going to do cast shows for March, April, and May. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the universe was like, no, 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 I think you really need to slow down. Let's let's cancel your schedule completely. Yeah. And um, Speaking of, like, canceled schedules, what was one thing that you were really excited about? Like, the very first thing that you were excited about that got canceled because of this pandemic? So, I have two things, but specifically speaking, um, I was going to go out for the very first ever Miss Pacific Northwest pageant. Mm-hmm. And I had actually bought, I had probably spent five to $600 on my package Yeah. before I got a message the week of the pageant. I think it was like Monday or Tuesday. I got a message that week that said, we're canceling the pageant because, you know, we're just trying to really be proactive and we don't want people to get sick. And that was heartbreaking. Uh, I haven't gone out for a pageant um, in a very long time. Yeah, it's been a long time, even while you were in Colorado. It, yeah, it had been a while. Pageants, like Donatella said this once, and I agree. I don't go for out for a pageant unless I know I'm gonna win. And what I mean by that, and it's not like you know you're gonna win, but you feel prepared, confident, confident, prepared. Yeah, uh, you feel there's a sense energized. of there's a sense of yeah, it's an energy that you get from it that you're yeah. like I'm ready to fucking 
like shit on this stage and i'm yeah. i'm gonna leave it i'm gonna leave it there and if they love it they love it if they don't whatever but it's a it's an energy it's a confidence that you get yeah definitely and we and i that shattered me and i was depressed for i think 48 hours and my friends were really good about it um but what i noticed is my mood did change drastically yeah my mood was very um sad and disappointed about the whole um thing in general yeah. So, um, getting on to the later point of this episode, something that we wanted to talk about specifically is we wanted to talk about Starlets and Harlots, a show that we'd been doing for roughly six months. But leading into that, I wanted to say I had a contest online that I did. Um, uh, so, for Starlets and Harlots, I provide one of the highest booking fees in the city. Um, and it's $60 for, $60 for a base pay. If you bring five people to the show, um, it was $75. And if you brought 10 people to the show, it was a hundred dollars. And so what happened was I had money left over from that. Um, cause I had a person cancel and then Starlets and Harlots was canceled. So I decided to do a contest online where I gave $75 away to a local entertainer and $75 away to an out of town entertainer. Cause and, we're all hurting during this. Yeah, we're all hurting. And so all I said is like me on Facebook, uh, sorry, like me on my Facebook fan page, like me on Instagram and share the post. That's all you had to do. And just post a picture of yourself. Um, so I know you do drag. Uh, the rules was you had to be performing in drag for at least a year. Um, and then just post your cash up your Venmo. And so we had two winners. So I had my two winners from that. Uh, Jackson uh, was our local entertainer. And that was super great. And people were really nice about that. The fact is, I think it's really important that even during this time that drag artists um, still get the money that they should be getting for their art. For real. Um, and I know that that's hard for us to do because we don't have venues to which are going to pay us. Um, just a side note with that too is... It's really uncomfortable at the level to which people do not want to pay drag artists. They, people are like, there's that meme, you've probably seen this too, that meme that says, um, you go to unemployment and they're like, oh yeah, so I need to Here's your five drink tickets. I'm like, oh yeah, we can help you. Here's your five drink tickets. You know what? And yeah, no, that's so true (laughs) that people don't want to pay drag artists, but also, okay, so it's something that's perpetuated not only with the people that don't want to pay us, but it's also with the drag artists themselves being against one another as far as getting paid goes. Because I found, so the weirdest thing that I ever experienced, and it was the very first time I experienced it, it was when someone in our um, old home city was saying, oh, all they want is their pockets filled, all they want is that, it's not about community anymore. Which is, I mean, it wasn't true. It was about oh, community yeah. for us. Really. But but it was fun for us to do it because we were getting paid and we could keep doing it because we were getting paid. And yeah. uh, he was basically going on and saying that we should be ashamed because we're doing it because we want to get paid. And I, I was kind of baffled by that because it's like, it's like we live in a society. We live in, a unfortunately, a very capitalist society that it's like, you know, your worth is by how much you demand for yourself. So... It was fellow drag entertainers making us feeling feel bad for wanting money for putting out this craft and putting out this this artistry. So it's yeah. kind of interesting, it's isn't so, it? And it's actually interesting because, like, here's the other thing about that conversation, too, that Donna's having. And um, I want to say two things. In Grand Junction, Colorado, towards the end of it for our last two years... Me, Donatella, My Secrets, and Natalie Simone were always walking away from our drag shows with a minimum of $120 on average in just tips alone. And Mm. that is kind of, and I, probably some people in Portland probably get that, but most of the shows I do, that's kind of unheard of to a degree, unless it's a brunch. And so I, like, going from that to this environment is just so different. And what I want to say about the money situation is, that money I was making in Grand Junction helped pay for all of my costumes for yeah. Camp Wanakiki. They helped pay for 
um, all the fabric I bought when I started to learn to sew, and I messed up everything, mm-hmm. and I had to throw away pieces. It helped me pay for rent. It yeah, helped me rent. pay for groceries. Yeah, <laughs> it, but it helped me really feed my drag. Like I've been wearing a lot of the same drag, and some people have pointed it out to me in Portland. But it's like if you want to see new drag, like you have to pay for new drag. You do. You, you do. have to pay for me to wear a different costume. Yeah. Like I would love to wear some lilac hair. I would love to wear some flawless hair. Um, I would love to buy some rogue safari nails. Yeah. I would. I like. I would love to buy some Godiva jewelry. Yeah. Um, those are all local. Godiva divine, flawless shade. Uh, lilac. Does lilac have a last name? But lilac and rogue storm safari. Like mm-hmm. all of these people create and craft things and like for like the Portland drag scene and whatever. And they're great at what they do. But if you want me to pay for those things, like you have to pay me to pay for those things. Yeah, you do. Like it's 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 the amount that you receive that you put back into it, honestly. Um so we are over our twenty minute mark right now here with the podcast. I I do really want to talk about Yeah, um, let's talk about um we'll probably go up to twenty five. So let's so let's talk about Lad Tap House. That's where we do Starlets and Harlots. Mm-hmm. Um, Starlets and Harlots is a show that we've been doing since roughly about August of 2019. Mm-hmm. And it's at a sports bar. It um, and it's, we do, it's, so Starlets and Harlots is about uh, Broadway theatrical dramatic uh, drag performances. It's a show built on the love of musical theater. Kinda. Yeah. Right now, where we sit, we don't know the future of what's going to happen with the venue that we do Starlets and Harlots at. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a awesome place for us to put the show together, where we get to turn a sports bar into this little cabaret venue. And we've had a really great cast of entertainers over the last six or so months, including entertainers like Cosmopolitan. Um, Touche Duche, which is now my drag daughter. Yep, we have Autumn Rain's Heart that's been a part of it. And, of course, we can't forget about our co-hostess, which is Donatella Nobody. Absolutely. She was the one that got us into Lads. and She built the stage at Lads. She built the stage. I mean, it started actually with a Pride show um, that happened there, outside on their patio. Yeah, first stage to which I think she also built. Yep, yep. Um, she has been nominated for awards for all the stage stuff that she does. Um, on our website, I will see if I can if I have any photos. Actually, I probably can post some performances yeah. from Lad that'll show you the stage that she built. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, and also our website, again, just for all y'all's info, is a gemofasecretpodcast.com. Check that out. Um, but we basically wanted to reflect on the time that we have spent over at Lad's for Starlets and Harlots. We don't know what's going to happen with this. Um, but we want to thank everyone that has been an audience member and guest entertainer at this show. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I've had a lot of fun being able to stage manage the show and uh, co-host. It's been something that has definitely given... Coco and myself the opportunity to have some fun uh, times together that are sort of reminiscent of the times that we had back in Colorado, but uh, kind of given us the opportunity to leave our stamp here in Portland and in some small way in our first year here. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, who was our last paid guest that we have? I don't know if I can remember off the top of my head. I, I can remember who we were going to have, but I know that it was very slim this last show because um, it was mostly people who were in the cast. I know that um, our last show... Um, yeah, I can't, I can't quite remember who our last... Oh, oh, you booked them. Did I? Yes, and he's it? a drag king. The, oh, Max Little. Max Little. Max Little. I, I, it was my I first time meeting Max, so I didn't I I didn't know Max before this, but yeah. yeah. Max, so, yes, thank you. Oh, and we also had... Mm. We, uh, Hun- we also it? had uh, Honeycomb. Honeycomb. Honeycomb, yes. Honeycomb. Honeycomb and Max. Uh, that's who it was. Sorry, it's very uh, difficult to remember this. <laughs> yeah, it felt like um, it was a very long time ago. It feels point. like it was two months ago, but it was not. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, um, so Max Little and Honeycomb, uh, both entertainers are very fabulous and awesome. Great. I met Honeycomb through the House of Adams, and they're just an awesome entertainer. Yeah, and 
that's another thing that I lost too. So Max Little and Mars are actually doing a drag rendition and and monochrome are doing a drag rendition of hairspray that i got cast for mm. and i think we're probably slowing down on that obviously as well mm. too because of everything that's happening yeah um one thing that i do want to do with this moving forward is i always want to showcase an entertainer in this city um before we um before we close out our sets because i think it's really important for you all to learn about the portland drag scene and what that drag scene means and i do mean east side and west side by the way, we've brought that up a lot, so I just want to explain that really quickly. There is this arbitrary slash non-existent thing called the East Side and the West Side Drag Entertainers. Um, the East Side is a little bit more artistic. The West Side is just kind of like more... Shablam! More shablam. <laughs> yeah, and so... And it, it doesn't really... Shablam! Exist. Pageants! <laughs> da 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 Shablam! Pageants! Um, the first person I want to talk about um, specifically, and I'll just say a couple of words about them is I'd really like to give a shout out to Cosmopolitan is because Cosmo has been on this really amazing journey because uh, they're they're an underage performer. They're not 21 I love Cosmo. Yet. Cosmo's super nice. And like Cosmo came to Donatella, my secrets birthday party and just talking to them in a very like civil, easy setting. They're just like so down to earth and they just like really have their life together for somebody Way more than I did when I was that And he's into so much weird shit and is so intelligent. I oh, just want to so pick his mind all the fucking time. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, seriously, just so great. And such a kind and wonderful person. And yeah. so a huge shout out to that. And so during this time, I want to always leave with a little positive message for everybody. Be kind to one another and be loving. Remember that we don't have all the information that we need, especially during this time of quarantine. When this gets mm -hmm. released, we don't actually know what the state of the world will be like. We no. don't even know if testing will be available. We don't know how many people will pop positive. But the fact is, it's really important that we remain calm. We listen to the CDC. We understand um, we understand that social distancing social distancing is a necessity. And we I know that we're lonely. But remember, we have FaceTime, we have Duo, we have um, Facebook Instant Mess, fa sorry, Messenger on Facebook to do video calls and like we can do group sessions on video games and things like that. We have MMOs and, you know, I, there's a way to make it feel a little less lonely. Wash your brushes, wash yeah. your drag. Also, like reorganize your drag closet and learn about your creativity. Like Geneva Convention made this really great post, follow her online. She said... You know, I don't feel as creative as some of you do right now, but when I was cleaning my drag room, I just like had little pops of ideas about different things that I can do for once the future. The quarantine is yeah, over. Yeah, once this is over. And that's the way to think about this. This is temporary. These times don't last forever. And we are going to get through this together. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning into a Gem of a Secret podcast. My name is Donatella, my secrets. And my name is Coco Gem Holiday. You can find me on Instagram at Donatella underscore my secrets. You can find me on Instagram at, at C-O-C-O-J-E-M Holiday. And follow us next week. We're going to stick to a pretty strict uh, routine of posting every Thursday for a Gem of a Secret podcast. Uh, we may uh, develop that as time goes on, but for now, that's kind of the posting schedule that we're going to start getting used to. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you. Have a good evening.